Someone who was back in the corner. Who is your appointed one, the spokesperson? Yes, they just appointed me. <laughs> <laughs> appointed, all right. Well, let's let's start with uh, priority areas. Which uh, top two or three priorities? And would you mind coming here and use the microphone so everyone can uh, focus in? Team ones. All right. My name is Kelly Miller, and I'm the spokesperson for Team One. And we chose uh, to plan for more recreational commuting, bike, and multi-use trails. Um, that was one of the big things that the people in our group sit on the B pack uh, for Pasco County. So it was important that we made sure that we have that in the plan. We also looked at adding light rail to the transportation uh, transportation system possibly in the 301 or 56 extension so that you can travel to the airport and other activity hubs in uh, side Tampa in a timely fashion. All right. Let's hear it for team okay. one. Okay. Thanks, team one. Any questions on the two priorities that team one selected? Are they clear and well understood? Okay, we'll invite team two, your spokesperson, to please come on down. We didn't have far to go. No. And we can make real-time edits if you like. Um, yeah, I can't read that, so I'm going to go off memory <laughs> for some more. So uh, one of our ideas was to have integrated corridors that are left open for future development. So that would be a combination of either existing roads and or bike paths where there's enough width to accommodate future ideas, such as uh, autonomous lanes or maybe rail and then also use those same corridors to go vertically for future uh, drone transportations. So with, uh, we know there's initiatives now with a lot of the trails to make them connected throughout, and that's an area where there's actually space that if we plan right now, we can utilize that width to also connect with roads. So that's one of the ideas. And then number two, I think, is a, a piggyback on that is just to utilize technology better um, advances to see how we can uh, whether it's cell phones, computers, or any ways to, uh, to improve the logistics of all the modes of transportation. Let's hear for team two. Real time. Real time. All right. Any questions for team two, or are there two ideas abundantly clear? Team three, you're ready to roll. Yeah, see. Just trying to make it easy on you. Hi, guys. I'm Jim Engelman. Um, we went real simple and easy, the things that most affect me. <laughs> that's uh, 54 and 41. Please fix that, please. How many of you drive that during rush hour ever? All oh, the rest of you have got to try it out. It's a, it's a, tr it's a treat. Um, I'll give you all some donuts. I'll be on the other side. It'll take you about 50 minutes each way. So we got to get that fixed. And of course, uh, 75 and uh, 56 exit. Fix it. You know how long it took me to get off that exit today? 25 minutes. 25 minutes. How many of you drive that consistently? The rest of you need to go try it today. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Let's hear from Team 3. All right. I guess no questions. You're pretty, pretty clear on what that is. All right. Team 4. We got a little sidetracked. Uh, talking about all the problems in the world. And, and we kind of got back to things. Uh, the first thing that was brought up is something that's kind of in the future, not really right now, uh, but it's being worked on. And um, actually, we are informed that they're working on it in the Clearwater area, and that was autonomous pods. Um, something we can look at for the future. Um, of course, widening the roads, I know everybody would put that on the list, so that was on our list. And then we brought up uh, long distance bus services from a particular hub, for instance, Wesley Chapel, um, have a commuter parking lot that would allow for people to park at a specific spot, move uh, a high number of people on the bus service to, uh, for instance, the West Shore area or the airport area, uh, provide Wi-Fi for those. Um, we also talked about, uh, I'm from the Washington, D.C. area, and up there, uh, it's very common for um, companies to subsidize the cost of that. So it takes a lot of the cost off the community, so it's just one of the options that's out there. So, thank you. What's your for Team 4. <laughs> Any questions for Team 4? That was Please. exactly what Team 1 had. Ah, Mix them together, those two. Yep. All right, so reason. which one? The, the bus number service? Number 4. Number 4. Number 4, the light two. rail? That with is exactly how our conversation with with what he was talking about on on um, parking rights. Okay, so should we add then 
the more bus service to item four, make yep. that a yep. Well, yes, are you we're talking bus service, but we're talking light round two, you know, mix it, put them okay. in together. That's what we came up with. Yep. Yeah. We, we had to make something, so we kind of went with the, the yeah. bus mm -hmm. Great minds think alike across yep. the That's across right. the way. Any objections to combining those two then? So we'll combine number 10 with number four. Make that a combo pack. All right, team five, a lot of pressure, a lot of good ideas already generated. So team five, please share yours. Thank you. Okay, our, our top focus areas are, <coughs> where we go? BRT Express Bus from Pasco into Tampa. Similar to the Front Range Express in Colorado. Never been to Colorado, that was someone's really good idea. BRT along 54 in South Pasco. And the CSX rail line purchase and conversion to being for passengers. What's your particular vibe? Which CSX? The freight line, right along 44. Yeah, it goes all the way through. 41, not number 201. Okay. I'm not going to do it. You will. Any other questions? On that, sure. team five? Yeah. Okay, does everyone have a polling device or does anyone still need a polling device? Raise your hands, we'll bring one to you. Okay, we need two more up front. Anybody Actually, else? Actually, there's extra ones here. All right. But I can do all of them. Yeah, you can do all of them. <laughs> okay. The yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bring the box all the way over and we'll just hand those out. What you're going to do is you're going to select your top three in order of priority. Uh, so yeah, raise your hands if you don't yet have a polling device. PJ will get that for you. Take a look at this fresh list of nine priorities and select your personal top three. Uh, what you'll do is you'll, you'll watch your keypad as you're pressing each number. You'll see a green flicker of light. That will indicate that you're being, your vote is registering. And uh, we just want to get a pulse for the room here. It's nothing truly scientific, just to feel what what are the priorities in the room? Top three in order of priority. So uh, watch your keypad as you press each number. Make sure it's flickering. The polls are open. And it will register the last three you put in. You put it does, yes. If you change your mind midstream, which some of us are known to do, you just the last three will make the hit list. That's what register, so last three. And again, none of the ideas that you generated in your teams will get lost. They're all recorded in the real-time record, as are these top ideas and then the ultimate uh, ones that we prioritize tonight. Everything will be in the real-time record for your view, so that's great. Does anyone need more time? Has everyone picked your top three? Need a little more time? Okay. The anticipation's building. We'll close the polls in three, two, one. Okay, so it looks like number four got the most energy, 19%, adding light rail, and that was that combo pack, uh, the more bus service focused on long distance, high traffic areas. Then it looks like number eight came in with 16%, the CSX rail line purchase and conversion to passengers. Then it looks like number six got 14%. Number six, BRT Express bus from Pasco into Tampa. Those are your top three. And then if we go into your top five, numbers one and nine, bookends, those both got 11%. So number one, 54, and 41, intersection, fix it. Number nine, uh, smarter technology, improved transportation systems. So those are your top five. Any other comments or questions related to your top priorities tonight? Please. Can, can we re-vote and do one and three, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's duly noted. Okay. Please. I have a question. Just yeah. looking at it, wouldn't six yeah. and four be combined? They are. They're very similar. They're about the same. Very similar. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So a lot of good alignment going on in the room tonight. Yeah. Please. But I suggest 
we separate light rail and the bus uh, proposal because it's the two different subjects. And uh, funding and all these things come in. We may get funding for the buses, but not for the light rail, and it gets mixed up. I think we should separate four light rail and what's the other one, a bus at six. Well, we will make note of that for sure. There was a lot of synergy when we originally asked the teams and they wanted to combine them originally, but we will definitely note that in the real time record, the, the, uh, the need to separate them at some point too. Thank you. All right, so let's move to the next area, which is how do we organize to do meaningful work? I'll invite team one, your spokesperson, to please come up again just when you got comfortable, right? And please share your top two ideas in terms of organizing. Thanks, Kelly. Okay. So we did another big combining thing when we were trying to put this all together. So we would like to see maybe a virtual meeting online once a month uh, so that you can download it and watch it again. This way, if you're not able to attend the meeting, you'll be able to save it and go back to it at two or three o'clock in the morning when it's a much more convenient time to watch videos, right? Um, uh, followed by a quarterly meeting that could be in person or include a field trip that would concentrate on the problem areas at peak times. Um, looks like that kind of all blended together on that. And then we had uh, another one that was creating groups or boards in each of the community working groups where the focus can become more detailed on individual community needs. And I know that's kind of what you guys already have done at this point. Um, but we were just talking in our group about how large Hernando and Pasco is when you combine them together and that we really didn't have a lot of representation here tonight from Hernando and I've been to some of these ones in Tampa and there's probably a handful of people from Pasco in the Tampa ones. So I'm really excited to see everybody that came out tonight. I really appreciate it just from the standpoint of being a citizen on the MPO. It's good to know that there's that many people out here that are wanting to get involved. So, thanks. Thank you, Team One. Thank you. Any, any questions for Team One on their top two? Pretty self, uh, pretty clear? Okay, Team Two. Uh, we had the same sentiment about virtual um, technology for the online meeting so that um, you don't have to fight the traffic, or if you're working, then it's more flexible. Um, so that you can just log in and go to um, a meeting and participate. And then we like once a month and then also once a quor uh, quarter in person. And along with the meetings, uh, we wanted to add, we didn't get to it, the length. So we only had 30 minutes and then 30 minutes, and yet the meeting is two hours. We would like more time to work on it because our second time, you're thinking about and you're thinking about, and we got, we actually re found a better idea for our first group, but you know, we couldn't work through it. So we think more time should be designated during um, the, the work groups as opposed to it's literally just a short segment of it. And then the second one was as uh, the first group said, we set a, a representative from each part of um, Pasco and Hernando counties so it's a more all-encompassing um, uh, solution as opposed to, hey, I heard about this meeting and so I'm here and I'm voicing my little, my opinion as opposed to you know, we're all one big team. Right. Thank you, team two. What did we say? <laughs> all right, well, the, the main things that we had, uh, we wanted to rotate the location so it's convenient more often for more people. Um, and we wanted to keep it in an evening time frame. We had talked about whether or not to do various times during the day, but the truth is you're going to get about 90% of your participation in the evening anyway, and we would lose more people by bringing it during the day, we felt, than if we kept it in the evening. So we thought that was important. Um, and then the other thing is fix uh, 41 and 54. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong topic. <laughs> and then, uh, and uh, in person and monthly. So we wanted the consistency to be there every month. And in person, yeah, we want to do the electronic stuff too. But we got to have in-person meetings because you can't have spirited debate and uh, jokes if you're not in-person. That's all I'm saying. All right. Team four, who is your spokesperson, please? Thank you. Um, we, of course, piggyback with a lot of the groups. Um, we talked about having an online forum. Um, a lot of people that can't particularly be here. 
Um, it was more of an open, like allow for collaboration of ideas to be here, to be presented to the group. Um, I, I want to piggyback on what was said just a minute ago, going back and forth with the time frame. You know, we had a lot of great ideas. Again, we got kind of sidetracked. It was the first time we'd met. So our, our group kind of went a little this way and that way, but we came back together. Um, what I like to see is we also talk about having presentations from different individuals, whether it be FDOT, whether it be a uh, contractor who's working on a particular project, can may have ideas for us that we can put some input to. But what I like to see is maybe this particular meeting would be more of an input from us. The next meeting would be presentation from those individuals. So we can kind of go back and forth so we have an opportunity to think about some of those things before we meet again. And again, the online format, if you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, you can put ideas in there. And if you forget about it and you forget about going to the meeting, they never get out there. Um, and then the last thing we have was face-to-face -face meetings, allow for individuals who are very uh, important in the process to present their ideas to us and offer us to sit down and have a conversation with them. Why was this particular thing, why are we using a diamond at 56 and 75? Why wasn't something else looked upon? So, those kind of ideas. Let's hear for team four. Okay. Let's hear for team five. Okay, um, top three. Use social media networks to distribute information and get feedback. Uh, central location and reaching out to elected officials to request their presence, reaching out to existing meetings and groups that are already happening pertaining to the, the transportation system and going to where people are already meeting. So any organizations and groups already doing things and meeting and talking about transportation, it would be good to collaborate because they've already have an organized group and uh, those are new faces and minds to collaborate with. Let's hear from team five. All right, um, are there any other clarifications uh, around these ideas of ways to organize? So PJ in a moment will open the polls and we'll ask for you once again to pick your top three in order of priority. If you should want to select number 10, that's zero on your keypad. Number 10 is zero on your keypad. Top three ways in which to organize to do meaningful work. Yes? Number one is the combination of multiple groups. I don't understand that. So how would you vote for number one? Uh, other than pressing number one, but it has <laughs> That was definitely an online, 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 online focus. So we just decided to oh, combine so like ideas. Idea. There was lots of okay. synergy around that particular one. So we made a big bonus number one online. All right. All right. Thanks. So you betcha. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready to roll. Top three ways in which to organize to do meaningful work. And I'll just mention as you're uh, voting, if you haven't had a chance to come over to this nifty map and uh, kind of chart your travel patterns, where you live, and that's blue, I believe, where you live in blue, and then where you work or where you travel in red. So, or other way around. No, Sorry. Blue, blue should be blue is right? where you work. Okay. Where was it? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, there, um, I know I was in group two, and then I think someone was maybe group four um, that said for longer meetings, but it wasn't updated live. So can we add that post notes that we're asking for longer meetings? Oh, you bet. Uh, Joyce will capture that now. Um, additional meeting time for more ideas, more discussions. Extended meeting times, pardon me. All right, top three. Anyone else need more time? Yes. Okay, sure, you got it. All right, we'll close the polls in three, two, one. So it looks like number one, the online is very definitely a priority. That got 26%. Looks like number 10, reaching out to elected officials, uh, officials, 17%. Then it looks like number two got 13%, rotating locations. And then number seven got 12%. Find at least one representative from each area, Pasco, Hernando counties, 
for all uh, encompassing solution. So those are definitely your top four. All right, good work. Um, we are now ready for any public comments. Did we have any public yes. comments? Yes. Uh, Karen? Karen, please come forward and uh, we'll set the... I'm all comment. We're good? Mm -hmm. uh, so please, Karen. We'll have two minutes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, talk about um, we're gr our group, I was in team two, we all agreed about buses and uh, transit and then also rail, but yet during the conversations you have to um, work to get a, uh, you try to get your everything in those two opinions um, or your two options. And I really think transit is the way. We had a great option of trying to incent incentivize, I'm not saying that word right, thank everyone, um, ridership. Um, because what is that going to do? If you're an hour on the bus or you're an hour and a half in traffic, an hour on the bus, you have Wi-Fi, you're going to relax, you can read a book, it is going to increase your, um, your, your life. It is going to you know, be a positive influence as well as, um, but why don't people ride the bus? And it's because you need to have that guarantee, maybe with a five you know, minute window of, hey, if I get on this bus, my bus number one is going to be there, but number two, it's going to get me to where I need to get to. And it's trying to change that concept. So I really think that is an option. Of course, everybody wants rail, and that you know is going to get longer distance, not necessarily a shorter distance. Um, like you mentioned, 54 wasn't meant to go from you know Lowe's to Publix. Um, so that's really what I you know think, and yet it doesn't get on the main options because we're trying to get that over-encompassing idea, and I think it gets lost. So that's my. It was definitely captured, so we'll have that for the real time record. Any other public comments or any other members want to uh, ask a question, share a comment at this point, please? Uh, I guess two, two things for comment. One would be, and, and I'm kind of new to the area. I lived in Missouri. We moved down here about two years ago. Oh, Jack George. I live in Land O'Lakes. And, uh, but we lived in Brandon for 15 years. We saw that thing grow into a traffic nightmare over the years, too. So, but I think the thing that comes to my mind is what is the end game here? What is the goal and objective? And I haven't heard that tonight. What are we trying to accomplish? Is it reduce carbon? Is it reduce traffic? Is it, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? And without a goal, I don't know how to get there. Okay. And then uh, secondly, being new back to this, being away 20 years coming back is, I don't know how FDOT works with this county agency, that county agency, what's Hillsborough think, what's this think, what is this capital board, what is it, how does all that tie together and get all this approved and make something happen? Because that looks like a big confusion. <laughs> so. That's a great, perfect segue into uh, uh, something we're working on. And Jack, I mean, we w actually we went to Missouri to learn how they actually in St. Louis they had I-70 project. Um, <laughs> and it was very controversial. A lot of you you might have uh, experienced that. So we actually took a group of folks out there and met with Missouri DOT. So Florida DOT learned a lot from the Missouri DOT folks on. And this is kind of where these meetings and a lot of the things that we're doing actually have come from, so um, a lot of credit to Missouri DOT. And uh, so how can you learn more? How can you get, you know, and this is important, and, and someone made the comment to me earlier, you know, just, you know, it's, it's we're all here trying to have an educated conversation on transportation, but there's so many variables. I've been with the agency 26 years. I could tell you I learn something new every day, and, and it's because it's ever-changing. It, you know, the laws are changing, legislation's changing, how does a project get financed? You know, how do we fund a project? You know, how do, what is the difference between BRT and light rail and, and commuter rail? There's a big difference. How it's funded, how it operates, who it serves. You know, uh, the question you asked about how do we work with our MPO partners and how do they work, collaborate with us and how does that filter down to the lowest level of governments that are making decisions you know, that more probably have more impacts on your day-to-day -day lives and, than what you know, Tallahassee does. So all of these things are, are questions that people continue to ask. So what we're going to be doing is putting together a series of 
uh, what we're calling primers. And these primers are, 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 are gonna be an opportunity for you to become more educated on the project development process, on the funding process, on how projects are funded, on the transit process. What, is, what, is, what are the different modes of transit? How are they funded? How do they operate? What, what, what market do they serve? So as we're having these conversations, so when somebody's saying, well, you know, I want BRT, well, I want light rail. Well, I, I don't want B light rail, I want, I want commuter rail. And no, I want, you know, we can understand where, what we're all talking about. We can be a little bit more informed as, you know, okay, so, you know, what is, what is that person saying? Did they truly mean light rail or no, or did they truly mean something else? So uh, August 18th, we'll start rolling these out. They will be, we're gonna be doing a series of them live at our office in, at McKinley, but we're gonna be recording those and they'll be made available for the public. You can view them at your leisure. They'll be on our Tampa Bay Next website. We'll have them out there. And, and you'll actually be able to, uh, if you've gone through all of them and, and viewed them all, you'll actually get a certificate and we're calling it the uh, Tran Citizens Transportation Academy. So uh, you take it to McDonald's and I think today if you have a dollar, you get a cup of coffee. <laughs> so it's, it's because we know it, we, we realize, you know, I could sit here and I could use, I, I use a lot of, I could use a lot of acronyms, a lot of terminology, and, and I'll get a lot of heads nodding, but in reality, I mean, most people are going, I don't know what the heck he's saying. And sometimes I don't even know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> but we, we, we think if, if, if all of us are a little bit more educated and understand the process, you know, that, then, then we can have that more, that longer conversation where we sit down and we're, and we're, ha and we're talking to each other and we're, and we're truly listening to what we're saying. Um, and Karen, your comment, if, if, you know, we've got the online, so don't, don't think that, you know, anything that wasn't said here today can't be said. Go online, provide us your information, provide us your feedback. All that information is being kept. That map sits right outside my office. Uh, Maddie and I sit close together, so every day I, I walk by that map and it reminds me of the people that we're serving and why we're serving them and where they're going. So, you know, this isn't just a map we take and we, you know, shove them in, in, in a file somewhere. I look at that every day. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any other comments, uh, but. I, Yes, sir. Yeah, and Chris. Thank you, Ed. Uh, good evening. My name is Chris Hughes. Um, I'm the director of planning and development for Pasco County. Uh, you asked the question, how do we organize and communicate and coordinate with the Department of Transportation? Um, you're right. This is a very complex, uh, very intricate system of efforts that are ongoing in the Tampa Bay region. I wanted to introduce Kurt Scheibel, who's in the back of the room. This is our chief of transportation transit in Pasco County. Uh, he's relatively new, he's an expert, and he's here to help fix problems. Um, we have another person who's arrived recently, six weeks ago, Craig Casper. Craig, raise your hand. Craig is the new uh, director of the MPO. He's the transportation planning manager, works for me in the planning and development office. Uh, Craig comes from Colorado, uh, where he was the head of a nationally recognized uh, MPO uh, in the Colorado Springs area. Um, he's a real talent, and we're going to be adding his skill set. Um, also on my staff, Ali Atefi and Manny Lajmeri in the back here have been here. They've been here for decades, and they've held us, held our own making this work. Um, we are painfully aware of the two intersections that we have to do first as our number one priority uh, up here. Um, there's a lot of activity going on on the 4156 intersection. Um, money is an issue. Rapid transit growth, transportation. We've got a new transit line coming down into that area. There's lots going on to try to help address those problems. Uh, the issue at 75 and 56 exit, uh, keep raising your hand. Uh, we knew that was coming when the project got approved that had to be approved that caused the block on the, on the off ramp. Um, we saw it coming, we signaled it. The laws and private property rights won out and it resulted in the exact backup that we thought would occur on that ramp. Um, it's not rocket science, folks. It's traffic. And we've got engineers and modeling that tell us exactly what's coming. We have to figure it out. What makes it complicated is it's different groups, different people with different money, different responsibilities, and everybody having their own immediate unique interest. So we are here jointly, the DOT, the Tampa region, the TMA, which is the Transportation Management Agency's area in the, in the entire Tampa region, 
we're meeting monthly, we're meeting daily in the county, uh, and we are addressing these issues. Um, I want to make you aware that this is only one aspect of trying to solve transportation projects. We are working hard to get this project to fully recognize the upward limit of their project area, which is about Route 52 uh, to the north. Um, and, and, re and everybody needs to recognize that we are right here at ground central in the Tampa Bay region. When you look at the centroid or where population and activity and growth is occurring, it has shifted north from Tampa and it has come to the Pasco uh, Hillsborough boundary line. Wesley Chapel is where it's happening. Uh, we've got Connected City. Those of you who don't know what that is, go to connectedcity.com on our website, the county website. Take a look at this new town development that's only five miles north of here on 75. Autonomous vehicles are already here. We have a new town community that's being built, an 8,000 acre community that has a secondary road system for autonomous vehicles. We already have been doing testing live on the ground in Union Park in uh, Pasco County. Uh, and these technologies are very under development. They're gonna happen. How they're gonna appear, how they're gonna actually become realized, everybody's trying to figure that out. But they are coming and the technology's here. All right, I'm gonna, I've already used up my four minutes or two minutes, whatever. There are two other major projects underway that you need to be aware of. One many of you have already been involved with. It's the 5456 corridor study. We're in what's called phase two of that study. And Manny or Ali, the next meeting is August 24th, uh, and it's going to be at. <coughs> on Land Lakes Boulevard at the Pasco County Utilities Building uh, on August 24th. Well, that's a very important meeting. It's going to be ground central for the next phase of development for the improvements to the 54 56 corridor across east west across Pasco County. The second major project that you need to be aware of is. Uh, and I never get this name right, it's the, uh, <laughs> I'm calling it the South Market area, but it's called the, the Market Crossings. Yeah. Help me. Crossings. Gateway, thank you, Mary Helen, <laughs> from our Long Range Planning Division. The Gateway Crossings Planning Study. And that is a market study area, which is the entire southern boundary of Pasco County. So it's, it's the land use analysis. It's gonna be the incorporation of the, the comprehensive plan updates. It is being integrated with the 5456 study. So there's going to be opportunities for major engagement and participation, not just in solving road problems and, and being engaged in the next project. So that's how you're connecting to the region. In Pasco, you're going to be looking at how to connect to the county, and you're going to see how to connect neighborhoods to traffic. Our biggest strategy to fix this problem, somebody said, what is your goal? I don't know what your goal is. We have one goal. It's to reduce trips on our roads, while at the same time, increasing jobs and economic opportunity in our community. Oh, and while making it a quality place to live. <laughs> so that's all it is, that's our goal. So how do you get there from here? And it's gonna be about building better and smarter roads. It's gonna be about enhancing the qualities and nature and quality of our communities. It's gonna be through public engagement, direct communication with people who care about living in a place where they wanna live. And we're gonna reverse the commute in Tampa. Right now we've got almost 60% of our, out every morning, about 60% of our drivers go, down, go south into Tampa, Hillsborough County. It's gonna be reversed. In 10 years, you can mark my words, we're gonna flip that. It's gonna be coming the other way. Now the way, the way that's gonna happen is through smart development and job creation in Pasco County. So Tom Ryan is here also uh, from our economic development office. Uh, he's going to help make that happen. So thank you, Tom. All right. So stay engaged. Speak up for what you care about. Make sure we know the problems on a daily basis. We will continue to address them, and we will continue to work closely with our partners at the state and the federal government and help us get more money from the federal government. Thank you. So thank you. Jonathan to just take a moment to share the masterpiece uh, according to Pasco Hernando <coughs> you, uh, Pasco Hernando <coughs> working great please okay. I'm not going to say that Pasco it's a tough mouthful but um, here I, I, I wanted to come up with a visual that showed um, this region Wesley Chapel 75 41 54 and just show 
or represent the amount of growth that's taken place in the past, that's going to continue to take place. Uh, the different people that use our roads, um, you know, we mentioned freight, uh, we mentioned bike paths, we mentioned buses, light rail, um, you know, taking kids to hockey. Um, there's so much activity going on here and, you know, the growth is just going to continue. And at the bottom, I put a turtle. You know, I said, well, what about the, 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 you know, nature and conservation? And I was reminded of that this morning. I was coming up Bruce B. Downs, you know, doing about 45 miles per hour there. And traffic came to a standstill. And there was a fire truck behind me. And there was traffic in front of me. And I thought, well, maybe it's a wreck. It was, uh, it was one of the, I think they're cranes. It was a crane crossing the street. And I'm saying, did they get the memo? You're supposed to, you know, use the lights. But um, anyway, I, th I think this area has a lot to balance, you know, with all the traffic and the growth. Um, but, you know, still as a reminder, you know, we got to work in conservation. And then we mentioned we want to keep in mind quality. Everybody wants quality. Okay, you don't want quantity, you want quality. It's a quality place to live. Um, so we got that in, and in the red, we've got the, the highlights from the boating, uh, you know, light rail, CSX, uh, bus service, all of that stuff is highlighted. So, anyway. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. So, um, we'll splash full color. Actually, Jonathan will splash this with full color, take it to finished artwork. And where are you going to find all of the work? Do you remember? Next.com. Yes. And please, just one more moment. Just one more. Thank you, Tom. I just want to, uh, I don't think I have to challenge this audience to do this, but I, and I wish I remembered who told me to do this, but about five years ago, someone told me when you travel, build in enough time to take the transit system from where you arrive to where you're trying to get to, at least one, one of the way, usually when you get there, because you won't have time when you're leaving. So take, take from JFK, take the train system all the way down into the city. If you're in DC and you're going to Baltimore, take the train. You can take Uber, it's, it's a lot more expensive, but you'll, surprisingly, we took Uber going back to the airport in Dulles I took the train system going to Baltimore, it was the same time. But, but challenge yourself to take at least one route using their transit system and then remember all the good and the bad that you experienced. And you'll remember, if you, if you challenge yourself to remember and bring it back home, you'll, you'll remember what you don't like. And then that's what you don't want to duplicate. Because if it's screwed up in a city like New York City, Odds are it's not going to get, it's going to be hard to make it better in a smaller city. They've been doing transit a long time in those cities. So challenge yourself to do that. And I, I can't take credit for that. Someone else told me that. It, it may have been Gray Swope because he used to take the trains when he would fly into the city. He was the, he was the state's economic development representative. But anyways, challenge yourself to do that and then remember it. Because you'll come back with a lot of great ideas and a lot of ideas you don't want to even touch. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that time. All right. So thank you for your engagement. Stay engaged. We look forward to the next opportunity to work with you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.